battle. This makes him a key eyewitness to Operation Blue Star. He was in the Agal Dagd when he saw Bindromale in action. With losses mounting and the operation dragging on dangerously, the army faced another problem. An armored personnel carrier sent in to get troops to the Agal Dagd was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade. The army had no idea that Bindromale was so well equipped. General Bra decided on a dramatic new plan. He ordered tanks into the complex through this entrance. <laughs> The Agal Dakt was all but destroyed in the tank barrage. It's believed that Bindrawale was shot as he and other militants ran from the front of the building. At the height of the battle, there were three hours of hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The battle at the Golden Temple has been hard fought and costly. The government estimated that about 100 soldiers and 200 of Bindramwale's men died during Operation Blue Star. Bindramwale's body was hastily photographed and then cremated with the rest of the dead militants. Two days after the operation ended, there were still pockets of resistance, as Major General Bra discovered as he gave an interview claiming that Bindramwale had received assistance from abroad. From some of the weapons that we've captured, we can see clearly the identification that, that the... We can clearly establish that these weapons have been obtained from China or Pakistan. But there's another side to Operation Blue Star. It's the story of those caught in the crossfire. When the attack happened, these men, all from the same village, were in the temple complex along with their families and hundreds of other pilgrims to celebrate the anniversary of the martyrdom of the temple's founder. In the early hours of the 6th of June, these men claim the army stormed their hostel looking for Bindrawale's men. it's hard to get any accurate figures of how many pilgrims died. Maybe it's better not to know. This has been a hard day, talking to the eyewitnesses and picturing the battle in this sacred place. But now I need to hear an account of Operation Blue Star 
from a very different perspective. I'm waiting for the man who's at the heart of this story, Major General Brar. Because of the controversial decisions he took, he's needed police protection for over 25 years. We've had to keep the details of our meeting secret. I've done many interviews in my career, but none have felt quite so personal. First, I want to know how he copes with the constant threats to his life. It doesn't feel good, but what can you do about it? I got a call from my son who was in America some years ago, two years ago, to say that please go on to the net and open up a site. And there, as you open the website, they said, our number one enemy of the six today is General Kuldeep Singh Brar. There have been six assassination attempts on his life, which have not succeeded, but the seventh one will. So those of you who are in favor of joining in for this, click here. Are you scared? I'm not scared. You must, there must be some fear. You're under constant well, protection. It's, it's, it's in your psychology, it's, it's at the back of your mind, that's about it. The timing of Operation Blue Star outraged many Sikhs. It was launched during an important religious festival. The complex was full of pilgrims like those I met. Many were killed. Why did the army go in at such a sensitive time? The orders given were, please go in as soon as possible because things are gone to a very serious state. Bindran Wale is in total command of the situation and the longer we allow this to happen, the more difficult it will be later on to curb it. It has nothing to do with any religious sentiments and the question is that if pilgrims were inside, we lifted the curfew on the third night to allow them to come out, those who wanted to come out, many came out. But what about the eyewitnesses that said they didn't hear any of the announcements? That's not true, that's not true. I mean, there were loudspeakers blaring away all the time, but the fact is, it's very difficult to uh, distinguish in the middle of the night who's a civilian and who's a militant. The firing is coming and the firing is being returned. And in crossfire, some civilians die and some militants die. It's not easy to uh, differentiate. Why go in when you know there are pilgrims inside? How long do you wait? You wait the next day, we won't be able to go in. But where could Bindrawala have gone if you had pretty much the whole place surrounded? No, no, it was not only a question of having the whole place surrounded. We would get surrounded in the next 24 hours. After all, how long can you keep this away from um, this news from traveling to the hinterland of Punjab? You'd have had thousands and millions of uh, Sikhs with spears, guns, everything rushing to Amritsar, and that would be a very sad situation for a man in uniform. So you went in at that point for the safety of your own army? Not only the safety of our army, we had to accomplish the task. If we don't go in, forget the safety of the army, the task isn't going to get accomplished. But what's about your responsibility to make moral decisions? This is the holiest, this is the centre oh, of, of the Sikh very sad, I'm very sad to tell you that it was no longer holy and sacrosanct. So if you're saying that uh, morally we should have thought differently, what about those people who were inside? Was there any sanctity left inside the Golden Temple? Where's the morality of the people who were building bunkers in there and storing ammunition? I'm sorry, I have to disagree with you. What do you say to those people who see Bindramwala as a saint, actually not a terrorist? He may have started as a saint, but he didn't end as a saint, let me tell you that. There was nothing saintliness about him at the time of Operation Blue Star. In the chaos of battle, the Golden Temple was hit and the sacred scriptures, the Guru Granth Sahib, were struck by a bullet. The Akal Takht, all but destroyed. Did he accept any responsibility for the damage done? The responsibility is collective for whatever damage did take place. But the point is, the damage could have been much more severe. But the army held back their weapons at that stage. Wasn't Bhindran Wale, and being such a religious man, concerned about the damage that could have been caused to the complex by sticking out and fighting and opening fire from all directions? 25 years on, do you now have any remorse or any regret about what happened? On the actions that I was asked to carry out, I was quite convinced that they were legitimate. 